Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In this powerful message, Fundamentals of Spiritual Warfare, Apostle Michael Orokpo equips you for the battles of life. Learn the key principles to stand strong against spiritual challenges. Discover how the Word of God is your ultimate weapon in spiritual warfare. Experience the power of united prayer to overcome any obstacle. Arm yourself with divine strategies for victory, empowering you with the fundamentals of spiritual warfare. Lift your hands toward heaven and worship the Lord. Talk to the Father from the depths of your heart. Honor Him, give Him praise, give Him glory. Give Him glory, give Him praise. We give you glory again tonight. We ask that you open our understanding, bless us with your presence, and manifest your power in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Can you leave this microphone the way it was when I came up? Glory to God! Hallelujah! You may be seated. God bless you, Abba Father, Abba Father. Thank you so much, choir. Glory to God. We are dealing with a sensitive series. We began on Sunday. Fundamentals of spiritual warfare. And I feel stirred in my spirit to continue with this teaching tonight. I believe many persons with great destinies, great potentials, are not fulfilling it. Not because they are not hardworking not because they are not visionary but largely because they are fighting battles beyond their understanding and beyond their fortification i can tell you that africans are hardworking. i can tell you that africans are blessed but we need certain levels of fortification in the place of understanding in engaging spirits so that we can have the way forward as touching our destinies our contemporaries in the western world to a very large extent had access to the light of the gospel before we ever did and whether you believe it or not it has given them an advantage jesus the son of god help the sister did not come from africa when he came 
came in the likeness of man, he did not come from our borders. The tribe that God chose as his people, he didn't begin from this region. It was God's plan that it would extend to us, which eventually did. But I can tell you that those who encountered God first had an advantage. In fact, Paul was preaching in the book of Romans, and he said that we were engrafted because they rebelled. So we have to understand that we need to learn fast and to catch up. That we didn't receive it first does not necessarily mean we will not fulfill our destinies. It also has its own benefit because we are the last people that God will use for the final emancipation. And this is why the last day revival is beginning from Africa. It's like handing over buttons. And you know that usually the best is saved for the last. So although it looks like we are disadvantaged, but what God wants to do with us will be greater than anything the world has ever known. He said, before them is a desolate, before them is the garden of the Lord, behind them is a desolate wilderness. That means what God has done in the past compared to what God will do in the future, the past is a joke. So we have an advantage, but we have to be quick to learn, to catch up, so that we can bridge the gap of ignorance that has, in a way, affected our manifestation. So Africans are disciplined, Africans are very intelligent, but we must also catch up in light, understanding the ways of God, submitting to the ways of God. You know, if you go to certain nations today, the way the cultures we receive from our parents, and now there are a few of them that are good, the moral ones. But you see, some of the ones that made us give allegiance to demons, diabolic practices, they are not necessarily good, all right? But if you go to some nations of the world today, their culture is Christian in nature. As a normal, I'm not talking somebody is preaching, their value system. Because they've encountered the ways of God for over 200, 300, 500 years. So certain battles have been won. The children are walking in the inheritance. But those of us sitting in this small auditorium here, I can assure you that some of you, you are the first Christians in your generation. That means there is a lot of darkness to deal with. And if you don't fight, nobody will fight for you. If you don't fight, you will allow warfare for your children. This is why now that we have received the gospel, we must wake up to maximize it. You know, I began telling you last week that we are all in, in the middle of a very thick warfare. And the unfortunate thing is that we didn't choose the battle. The battle chose us. So it's not an issue of, I, I, I'm not interested, I don't want to fight. It's not about choice. You were chosen. The battle has already chosen you. You have to wake up and fight. Look at some scriptures quickly just to corroborate the things I'm trying to say. First Peter 5 verse 8. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, when did I make him an enemy? I don't know when I had quarrel with this being. But the first counsel is what? Be sober. That means be at alert. If you relax, you'll be in trouble. Be vigilant. Watch. Because you have an enemy that chose you. You didn't choose him. Your adversary, the devil. He said, as a roaring lion. So this your adversary is not a sheep. He fights like a lion. He fights like a hungry tiger. So you must understand that ferocity and aggression is a necessary part of the battle that you have been summoned into. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, is not seeking whom to just fight with. He's seeking whom he will devour. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10, the Bible said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It said, verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand the wise of the devil. Verse, verse 12. It said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When did I enter a wrestling match? The ring was designed before you were born. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against 
principalities now this is not just an enemy that functions disoriented way in a disoriented manner it's a well-structured organized system of offense against you we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against wickedness in the heavenly places so you are in the middle of an intense battle and your enemy is an organized system that will devour and destroy you if you are not fortified with the necessary intelligence and so paul speaking in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 he said less satan has an advantage over us he said for we are not ignorant of his devices this scripture is for those who are born again so if you make the mistake to assume that because you are in christ you have no battles you are joking the only advantage is that you are fighting from victory because you are more than a conqueror but if you don't understand your advantage and maximize it you will become a victim he said if you faint in the day of trouble it's not because your god is not powerful he said it's because your strength is little so if you want to have victory sustain your victory you must have necessary equipping in order to have an advantage and last week we looked at three basic things number one we try to define the nature of our enemy and we dealt with three major dimensions of enemies and i'll deal with them because today i want to deal with the dynamics it's a bit more intricate tonight we looked at men that cooperate with satan they are wicked and unreasonable men in this world that want you destroyed and as i deal with the dynamics of warfare i will show you how these people fight so that you can be fortified there are wicked men that will have no joy except as you are destroyed in fact your destruction is what gives them solace they will literally give thanks that you went down it is the nature of men they a lot of people cooperate with the devil to advance his ad agenda and i told you that if without men spirits will not be powerful on earth only god can function in this realm without the cooperation of men and even god does not operate like that because there are two dimensions to god there is the sovereign dimension of god where he can do whatever he please, pleases and is right because he's sovereign and there's also another dimension of god where in his love he reduces himself to relate with his children according to laws so that those laws will give them a a gateway into his realm for participation all right apart from that no other spirit can function on earth without men so when you see devils walking on earth know that they have the cooperation of men so the first enemy we identified are wicked and unreasonable men the second enemy we identified are demons and we said demons are messengers because even in the demonic ranking in the rankings of, of satan there are messengers they send just the way it is in the realm of god where you have angels but angels are not the only spirits in the realm of god there are princes in the realm of god who don't run errands for example the 20 and 4 elders don't run errands for god they co-rule with him in eternity that's why they have thrones and if you study revelation chapter 5 when john was confused as to what to do in heaven when he was weeping the bible said one of the elders came unto him and said weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed so they understand matters of government and god gives them the privilege of participation those are not messengers they are princes in the realm of god in the demonic realm there are messengers and there are princes demons are messengers and demons can only function when they possess men because they don't have jurisdiction to function in this realm so when you find demons at work you can cast them out if you have and understand your authority in christ because they don't have legal jurisdiction to function on earth but we said demons are not the only enemies in the demonic ranking there are princes who have bodies who can rule territories you don't cast those ones out you wrestle with them so when you are dealing with men you need wisdom you need the leading of the holy spirit you need value systems you need laws and principles to prevail when you are dealing with demons you need to understand who you are in christ exercising your authority in order to have victory when you are dealing with principalities build stamina <laughs> because they don't cast them out they fight them 
after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the anointing would have been boiling. So a being showed up and said, if you are the son of God, because they, these ones don't possess men. They are princes. They are looking for territories to dominate. So if you don't understand that even in the demonic, they are beings that you will fight to stand your ground, you will become a victim before you start. So we said the first thing is to understand the nature of your adversity. And we took time to outline that last week. And then we went further to outline the weapons that they use or how they fight. And we showed a few of them. Number one, in fact, we dealt with the dimensions of battle that we face when we are dealing with any of these entities. And number one, we said there is the battle of attrition. And we said the battle of attrition encompasses every kind of battle. The only nature of this battle is that the devil comes to weary you out. So he can come with any dimension of the battle. But the goal is for you to get tired and to give up. And we took time to outline and itemize scriptures. That's where I quoted Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of trouble. So they come to fight you to faint. He said if you faint it's because your strength is small. Matthew 12 43 to 44. When an evil spirit is gone out of a man. The Bible said it moves in dry places. If it doesn't find where to stay. It will return to that man. And it will return with seven more wicked demons. Even Jesus when he was tempted. The Bible said and Satan liveth him for a season. So in the battle of attrition, whatever the devil is using against you, he will keep coming until you give up. So we said that dimension of battle requires a lot of spiritual stamina because you have to prevail. That's why I said, having done all to stand, Ephesians 6, 13, it says stand therefore. So victory in this battle is the capacity to stand. It's a dimension of warfare. And then we spoke about misrepresentation as another dimension of this battle. They try to misrepresent everything you are doing so that you are frustrated. Revelations 12 verse 10 and 11 and 12, the Bible made us to understand that Satan was called the accuser of the brethren. So the goal is to misrepresent you. And I told you that the way to fight this particular kind of battle is by the blood and by the words of your testimony. And I showed you how to administer the blood. You don't administer the blood by saying, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead. That is not biblical. You won't find it anywhere in the Bible. Two basic ways of administering the blood is number one, by the communion table. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 27, after he outlined the whole procedure for administering the communion, he said, as often as you do this, you proclaim the Lord's death. So we release the power of the finished works of Christ on the communion table. And I said the second way to administer the blood is by walking in the light of the word of God. In 1 John chapter 2, 1 verse 7, it said if we walk in the light as he is in the light, it said the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. So the blood of Jesus is activated when you begin to walk in the light. This is why as a Christian, you cannot afford to function by endless human genealogies. You have to live according to the revelation of the scripture. And if I may add, the third way to administer the blood is by proclaiming the word of God. That's why I said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. So if you want to see the power of the blood, you must learn to understand and prophesy scripture. If you don't prophesy scripture, the blood will be impotent as far as your battles are concerned. Misrepresentation. Number four. Number three dimension of battle, I said, is torment. Satan comes to torment people. And most times, he uses their weaknesses, like fear. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, he says, As much then as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, himself likewise took part of the same, that he might deliver them, that he might deliver them from the power of death, the devil who has the power of death. And he said, They who all their lifetime, were kept in bondage through fear and the bible told us in second timothy 2 7 that fear torments so when the devil wants to fight you sometimes he just creates a system of frustration around you so you are tormented but i told you one of the ways of winning that battle is to stay stirred up stay stirred up that's why in second timothy 1 verse 6 before Paul spoke about verse 7, where he talked about fear, he told Timothy, this charge 
give I thee, son Timothy, that you stir up the gift of God that is in you, so that fear does not cripple you, rather that you walk in the gift of the Spirit. Because he said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of what? Of boldness, of love, and of a sound mind. So if you are not stirred up, fear will subdue you. And it's one of the strategies Satan uses in the warfare to cripple God's children. This is why you must not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. But you must be filled with the spirit. Because you don't know where the devil wants to take you unawares. You are driving and suddenly you hear a sound in your, in your engine. Your heart jumps and you, you, you drive into a ditch. Because fear was locking. But if you stay stirred up when there is something. Before you know what is happening. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. You just arrest the whole atmosphere. Because your spirit controls your environment. I wish you understood that. Your spirit controls your environment. If your spirit is weak, anything can permeate your atmosphere. But when you are strong because you are stirred, nothing can penetrate your atmosphere. You will shut the gate and there's nothing Satan can do about it. Number four, we spoke about direct attacks or confrontation. Luke 13, 16. Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan, this 18 years low, has bound. So Satan attacks people directly. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. They were oppressed of the devil. So there is a place where Satan attacks men. You know, as I, as I proceed tonight, I will show you. There are many things that are difficult to capture doctrinally but don't argue their manifestation no. somebody tells you that for the past one year she's been molested by spirits and she can feel it don't come and say it's not in the bible you are joking no i will show you today many things that theologians have not been able to explain from the bible i will show you there are many of them here because the manifestation is superior to what we can explain doctrinally in fact, the things we are able to explain doctrinally are there for certain reasons. And one of it is so that we can believe in Jesus. Doctrine is designed in such a way that you know enough to believe in Jesus. In John 21, from verse 15, if you read down towards the end, 20, it said, many things did Jesus captured within manifestation that are not written. It said, but these ones are written. That you may know that is the son of God and that you might believe on his name that believing you might have eternal life the things captured in doctrine are designed and enough to give you a victorious life second Peter 1 verse 3 according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has what brought us to glory and virtue so doctrine is not the complete ambience of manifestation there are manifestations you can't explain but the one that doctrine affords us is enough for us to know jesus it's enough for us to live a victorious life and god designed it that way to also give us an advantage he said in deuteronomy 29 29 the things that are the secret things belong to god doctrine does not explain all the secret things the secret things belong to God. He said, but the things that are revealed, he said, those ones belong to us and to our children forever. Now, as a Christian, what do we advise? Stay within the ambience of doctrine. But don't make the mistake of assuming that everything we can explain in doctrine is everything there is. So when you are fighting battles, you will see many manifestations that doctrine can capture. Go and read your Bible. Let me give you a few of them since I'm talking about them now. I'll show you things that theologians have debated for aeons that they cannot have an absolute position. Number one, the witch of Endor being able to summon prophet Samuel and Samuel came to give a prophetic word about the death of Saul that happened the next day. <laughs> Went into the gates of the underworld and brought a prophet, a holy man of God. And the holy man showed up and told Saul what will happen the next day. And it happened. These are things that have been debated. That's not all. 
the origin of demons where do they come from you can't explain it but you can't deny their manifestation there are arguments that say demons are disembodied beings because they are the sons of the nephilims and that when the first world was destroyed they were purged and because they were offsprings of spirits and because god did not have a provision for them there was nowhere they could go so when their bodies were destroyed they began to look for bodies to possess because they were created they were born with bodies that's when angels in had intimacy with with daughters of men they gave birth to giants when god purged the world in the days of noah those giants were destroyed but their spirits had nowhere to go because god didn't have them in his plan so they started floating about as demons and they are the ones who possess men that's one argument and there are many other arguments and theologians keep debating and debating because the manifestation is real but there's no accurate explanation or doctrine that's why when you are in warfare you need a lot of wisdom in practice stay within doctrine but in manifestation know that there are many scopes there are many syllables this is why the holy ghost comes to help us because the much we know from bible is good for our daily living but when the warfare gets deep in the spirit you need prophetic direction you need the holy ghost to guide you you need the wisdom of god to guide you however all your practices should remain within doctrine if it goes beyond doctrine trust god for his sovereignty to intervene but i'm telling you that there are manifestations that are difficult to be explained by doctrine take for example the ascension of enoch and elijah to heaven flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom how did they go to heaven and there was no testimony of transfiguration they were carried like that bodily to heaven and the bible said elijah will come again from where where was he taken to are you following what i'm saying i'm trying to explain this so that when you are in, in battle don't limit yourself and say hmm. i know a lot of people who say this thing cannot happen it's not in doctrine this thing cannot happen i don't preach extra biblical practices i don't do that but i can tell you that there are manifestations that you cannot explain with doctrine that people are going through that you can't deny about Paul being taken to the third heaven even Paul said I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body how about the sons of God and the daughters of men some claim that the sons of God and the daughters of men are the children born by the intimacy between angels and humans others say they are the children born from the intimacy between the sons of Seth and the other descendants of men that were in sin that deliberation has been there for aeon no absolute position how about the man of lawlessness that boss paul spoke about at the end of time is he a spirit or a man <laughs> so there are many manifestations right many manifestations but we must understand how to fight within the context of what is revealed glory to god but while we are yet fighting we shouldn't deny the possibility of what is not revealed there are people that demons spirits come to molest and they will show you all the signs some of them are even captured on camera you see you don't see anybody but you see physical things happening and you are wondering how is this possible it's not something you want to come into church and start trying to explain with doctrine you waste your time but don't deny that manifestation so you use the blood of jesus use the name of jesus and fight because that's what's available to you and trust god to have results but never deny manifestations that you cannot understand while you don't preach it in order to stay accurate don't deny their possibilities glory to god we are dealing with found fundamentals of spiritual warfare that's why i'm touching some of these things you know one of the most difficult thing to do in teaching is balance People who don't know it when you are done teaching they'll go and pick something and sit there and start a sermon <laughs> when i see these things i laugh because if you know so much why has god not entrusted authority to you in your generation you will see them on comment box debating for hours and they are waiting for anybody that will reply like gazelles they will perch there 
typing on Microsoft Word. Type, a whole book will come out of their deep. <laughs> Yeshua. Hamashia. Lion of Judah. Agune Chimba. Number five dimension of battle that we looked at is manipulation. Satan manipulates men so that they can have they can create problem for themselves. Second Chronicles 21, verse 1. The Bible says Satan moved David to number Israel. It was against the law of God, but he was manipulated. You read your Bible, Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. Satan manipulated Eve. And she violated the ordinances of God. These are dimensions of battle. And I took time last week to show you what you need to do to overcome all of them. Please take time to listen to that message again. It will bless your life. And finally, I mentioned that Satan can weaponize your environment. The Bible said in Psalm 121 verse 6, The sun shall not smite you by day. That's not, prophet, that's not a prophetic verse. There are astrologers today who can use the moon to cast pear. Astrologers, they, <laughs> they, they constellation, they can manipulate the constellation to darken the possibility of a territory. That's why I was talking to you about atmospheres. When principalities are involved, you must be careful with atmospheres because they can, they can enslave creation. Did you not read your Bible? Romans 8.21 It said creation is in bondage. Anything created now because Jesus has not returned, Satan can manipulate it and use it as a weapon. It's a type of warfare. So you need to understand your own weapons in order to have advantage. And that's why we went to the third phase of our teaching last week and we outlined a few weapons that God has given to us to give us an advantage in battle and i said number one is the whole armor of god the bible says to put on the whole armor of god wherewith you'll be able to withstand all the wires of the devil so if you are not clothed with the whole armor of god you have a problem and remember he didn't say the whole armor of god will be put on you he said you put it on that's how you use the weapon and he told us about the helmet of salvation so you need to understand the doctrine of salvation for yourself and let it be your consciousness because if you will stand tall in this kingdom that helmet must be in place he spoke about the belt of truth you need to understand the truth of god's word and stand in the truth regardless of what satan throws at you he spoke about the breastplate of righteousness you need to understand righteousness and understand it in context you know last week i was talking about <laughs> the meaning of righteousness and somebody got offended glory to god i said most times we attempt to preach righteousness but we end up preaching morality and i stated it clearly that morality is not wrong and i also stated that i preach it even here in fact, if you are a revivalist, it will be impossible to preach without addressing morality. What is morality? It is adhering to certain values that are ethical. Values that meet ethical standards. That's what morality is about. But it's not only Christians that advocate for morality. There are many religions of the world that also advocate for morality. So I said morality is good, but it's not the gospel. And somebody got offended that morality is the gospel. I said, no, if morality is the gospel, then every other religion of the world is preaching, is preaching the gospel. Because I can hardly point at any religion who does not advocate for morality. I don't know anyone. But I said, morality is included in the message because it's the byproduct of righteousness. If you understand righteousness, you will live moral. But if you don't understand righteousness and you want to live moral, you will struggle. It's like baiting a pig and telling the pig to be neat. It's impossible. That's what the Old Testament saint tried for 1,500 years. They couldn't. Because you must be righteous before you live righteous. 
is living righteous that is called morality but righteousness itself is first of all a nature that was gifted you by god that gives you the right to stand in god's presence so if you don't have the consciousness that you now have god's nature second corinthians 5 21 he made him that was without sin to become sin for us so that we might become not have become the righteousness of god if you don't have the consciousness that now you have the nature of god and if you don't have the consciousness that you didn't end this nature it was given you my son has my nature he didn't end it i gave him through biology there's nothing he would have done to be like me it was a gift to him if you don't have this understanding that this is the nature of god gifted you and this gift gives you capacity to relate with god and on the strength of relating with god you can now live right and you just go ahead to live right you will struggle a thousand times so righteousness is first of all about a nature before it is a lifestyle so when you understand second corinthians 5 21 understand romans 5 17 then you now go to ephesians 4 17 to 24 that now that you have the nature of god you can't live like the gentiles so you need to have your mind renewed by the word of god and the renewer is coming to understand that you now have god's nature the renewer is coming to understand that you have the ability to stand in god's presence the renewer is coming to understand that you now have authority over sin when your mind is now renewed then you go to first john 3 7 and 10 that it is in doing righteousness that you manifest truly that you have the nature of god do you understand this so if you don't know this you will not have the breastplate that means your chest will be porous arrows can enter you that's why somebody will stand somewhere and say that person is a thief and when they tell you you are heartbroken that's why demons can propagate things against you and you want to fail for those of us who know we are righteous when they speak against you you say who can bring any charge against god's elect for it is god that judges it is god that justifies it is god that condemns and on the strength of that the arrows fall they they, they become useless they can't affect you anymore meanwhile all of the dynamics of spiritual warfare with men is around this subject and i will show you from scripture a moment ago but many can't succeed because they can't withstand arrows arrows they shoot at them in church they shoot at them in the market they shoot at them in the office and then they carry bitterness they carry depression and all of those things become too heavy brother throw those things away you are the righteousness of god nobody can bring any charge against you there is a race set before you you can you can't move forward unless you travel light speed is for those who are light go to the marathon go to the athletics and see you don't wear gotta to run no 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 you need skin tight you need to be light to be able to run and for some of us who are not just running but flying there's no time to contemplate it because there are those who are walking there are those who are running but some of us we are flying by the spirit we are flying we are flying you can't fly with weight you cannot fly with weight ease yourself of those bodies when they throw an arrow let the breastplate of righteousness stop it that's why i told you you can't fight until you put on the whole armor of god and then they said have your feet shove with the boot which is the readiness of the gospel come in the night i'm ready come in the morning i'm ready see people like us they don't persuade us to go for evangelism no necessity is laid upon us people like us they don't persuade us to give no we are sons in the kingdom we advance the estate of our father people like us they don't beg us to pray for kingdom advancement we live praying we die praying because all our life the breath that comes out of our spirit are the utterances and the invocations of the spirit for out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters rivers it's called the readiness the readiness see some of you are defeated because they need to send you an invitation letter before you go for evangelism some of you are defeated because they need to preach a message of prosperity before you give for kingdom advancement nobody should motivate you if it's about kingdom 
You know there is a move today on the internet. They say they are, they are deceiving men to give. It's an attack on the church. That only the godly people will fall for. Have you known any brand in this world today that is not sponsored by billions? Do you think angels will come and preach on the street? You are listening to a message. Do you know what is put together for that message to reach you? As I'm talking to you now, there is a QLX microphone. There are amplifiers at the back there. There are speakers. There are laptops transmitting it to the internet. There is a 200 kVA generator burning diesel every second. You think these things happen just like that? And we are preaching now to more than 30 nations right here, right now. How do you think it works? The gospel rides on the wings of the spirit, but it is carried by the, the, the resources that money can power. They say, cry out loud, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. You allow people to deceive you. Oh, church is brainwashing you. See, there are fake people everywhere, but it doesn't stop us from doing the right thing. In the days of the apostles, the Bible says men sold their lands and brought the money to the apostles' feet so that kingdom can move forward. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!